what's up everybody welcome back to the channel tammy talks here um real housewives of atlanta season 16 episode 2 sisters before misters let's talk about it y'all so the episode picks right up where last week's episode left off where the ladies are all in disarray right so Back over at the Kenya Sheree Magneta side, Kenya is telling Sheree that Martel DM'd her at uh, you know at least six months or, or so ago before they even got together. So she does clarify it's before y'all got together. So she's not trying to make it seem, at least in Kenya's eyes, I'm not making it seem as if Martel is trying to come on to me now. That's not what she's saying at least, right? So Martel walks over and Martel said that, you know, every time he comes to Atlanta, he's with Sheree. So the other girl, whoever this other girl is, this other woman is that he's supposedly talking to, is getting the short end of the stick. Meanwhile, on the Candy um, Sanya saga, Sanya goes to check on Candy. Marlo is in her confessional said and saying that Courtney and uh, Candy were on their J-Lo, Mariah Carey, I don't know her, I don't know her type vibes. And it's funny because when you think about it, that is definitely what this is giving. So Candy feels that Sanya should have given her a heads up if that if there's a, a woman that's going to be coming that has an issue with her. If you're going to have us both in the same room and you know about this beforehand, you know that she has an issue with me, the least you can do is give me a heads up. And I a thousand percent agree thousand percent agree with candy and it's not to say that you know candy needs protection or anything like that but if i'm gonna be at a party and there's all of a sudden this woman there that i don't know but i find out that she has a problem with me and my friend didn't put me on and didn't let me know that they invited this woman i'm gonna have a problem with that too so Celia goes over and tells Sheree and Kenya that Candy is about to fight. And they was like, Candy, don't be fighting. What? So everybody gets up and we go over to where Candy is. Candy has stepped outside. She's in the hallway. So they're all talking and trying to figure out what happened. While this is going on, Sheree goes and brings Courtney over. Why? Why? And everybody's kind of looking at um, Sheree, like, why would you bring her over? Like, what is, like, Sheree, Lord have mercy. This, I feel like this entire episode, Sheree was just in a constant state of, uh, what, what do I do? What, like, what is going on? So, they start to talk about Martel again. So, Sheree is like, okay, well, let's talk about the stuff that Martel is saying. Samuel was like, deuces, y'all, that's, you know, that's my cue. And they're like, oh, where are you going? And she was like, it's my husband's birthday. It's Ross's birthday. I'm not about to do this with y'all. Like, no, ma'am. This is the, the entire day should be about him as it should. I saw absolutely nothing wrong with, um, I saw nothing wrong with Sanya getting up, walking away and feeling like, let me just go ahead and remove myself from this situation. So. Martel comes over and he's talking to Kenya and then Kenya is like, yeah, you know, you DM'd me six months ago. Martel is like, no, I didn't. Kenya is saying I didn't even accept it. So if something was deleted, then, you know, you must have deleted it yourself. Martel tells her that you probably accept every DM. You accept every request. So then everybody is like, oh like oh my god no don't say that because we know what the insinuation is so martel then says he goes back and he's looking at his phone he comes back over by her has his phone all in her face and it's like look look okay my bad i guess i did dm you it's from 2020 we see the dm pop up on screen and it's like it, it was the the thank you whatever whatever that Martel said that it was about or that we heard that it was about I, was it on candy speak on it I think it was on the speak on it that we heard about that so can um 
Candy is in her confessional and she is saying that Kenya didn't even accept it. So there's no way that she could have deleted it. We saw on camera, Kenya never accepted that, that DM. So now we're looking at two different things. Now there's two different scenarios. Is, is Kenya lying? Is Kenya just assuming that that's what the DM was about him trying to get with her? Or did Martel delete it on his end? Nonetheless, Martel then says, I don't give a fuck. It was two years ago. So now everybody is looking like, oh, you doing a lot. You're being kind of loud, aggressive, as Kenya is saying. Like, you're doing a lot right now. So Kenya gets up. Kenya follows after him. What did you just say to me? Are you cursing at me? Because now she's offended. So Kenya tells him, once a cheater, always a cheater, you lying piece of shit. I said, oh, Lord. It escalated so quickly. Martel looked taken aback but again like we all have been saying Martel can play these games and get in these women's faces on love and marriage Huntsville because they not about that action with him but over here over here when you're on the housewives going against the likes of of these ladies that literally argue for a living at this point you are not going to be able to handle it Martel cannot handle Kenya's mouth he can't he cannot. Just like next week when Sheree is on Love and Marriage Huntsville, she is, um, Tiffany is not going to be able to handle Sheree. The two worlds just can't collide. Two different sets of mess go on on the show. So, Kenya then tells Sheree, the way that he's talking to you is the way that he's going to talk to her eventually so Sheree is in her confessional and she is upset she feels that they're just trying to create and spin a narrative she don't like the way things are going Martel is in the car because now everybody leaves you know just damn the whole party now everybody's ready to go so Martel is in the car talking to Sheree and he said he is not going to apologize because he said what he said and he meant what he said I said all right all right you know, I know that Martel um, probably thought this would be an amazing crossover. I don't know if he thought this would help his brand, if he thought this would just help him. I don't know, whatever. But it, you're, you're not getting a good edit. You know what I mean? And by edit, I mean there's no good edit for you that can come from this. Going through Twitter, the only people that I have seen that are kind of like, oh, they're doing Martell wrong are the people that clearly don't watch Love and Marriage, Hunt Love and Marriage Huntsville. But I'm wondering how many people are seeing, or I'm wondering what Carlos King thinks is going to happen. Does Carlo think that all these people that are watching this show, does he think that they're going to be like, oh, let me go find out more about Martell and go over to Love and, and, and Marriage Huntsville? Because I don't think that's what's going to happen. Carlo was also on Twitter um, saying that his name was blurred out of, that his name was like blurred out of the text message, blah, blah, blah. Carlos is doing everything but trying to rectify the disaster that has become Love and Marriage Huntsville. But all right, so we get to, you know, let's get past the party, y'all. Let's get past the party. Now, Drew, we get Drew's first scene of the episode of the season, really. Drew is back from Chicago. I believe she took, she took her oldest son. She took JoJo, but I don't think she took her youngest. So I wonder what that is about. Why would Drew only take her oldest son? I wonder why that is. So. Um, we find out that Drew's father has Alzheimer's, so he does not always recognize her, and she was saying how it was hard for her to, you know, when he went into the nursing home, he was walking, now that he is out of the nursing home, I mean, now that he's, um, he's in a wheelchair, so she said it's hard for her to kind of see him like that, doesn't always recognize her, but when her mom is around, and it kind of, it's like he starts to kind of piece piece them together in bits if his memory comes back so she said that while her father might not have recognized her right away she played a song 
um, you know, recording of her singing and he immediately recognized her voice. So she said that she wants to release more music. We know her as an actor and a housewife, but Drew sings. I mean, those of us that watched the game, we, we saw Drew Sedora on the game. I feel like Drew's team kind of fumbled the bag when it came to that, because why wasn't Drew's solo music career pushed more? You know what I mean? Like, you were a singer on the show. So why wasn't that pushed more? Why wasn't that, you know, like, where where was the disconnect that came in from there? But nonetheless, she wants to work on an EP. She wants to do more music. She said she sang at a friend's birthday party last year, sang happy birthday. And they panned to that to Sheree. And I said, oh, that's the... that that's the friend that you're talking about that that's putting a lot on it that's putting a lot on it in terms of whatever but okay you want to call Sheree your friend I guess girl so she wants to release this EP she just put out a single uh independently written and produced by Ralph I said I know you fucking Ryan Drew really really why is Ralph I don't care if Ralph can play the piano why is he writing and producing music for you so Drew then asks about the party. She wants to know who made Candy mad. Ralph was like, oh, I found out that Courtney is my cousin and blah, blah, blah. And it, it was her. And she was like, your cousin was trying to fight Candy? I guess y'all really are related because y'all be wanting to fight. That's not cute. <laughs> Whenever people do that, like, I, no, no part about fighting as an adult is cute unless you in a boxing ring or unless you're like a, a MMA fighter. But you just being a regular, regular schmegler person that wants to fight, no part of that is cute. No part of that is cute. But, you know, go off. Go off, Drew. <laughs> if that's what you thought was the best thing to kind of highlight, sure. Okay, girl. So, Sanya and Candy meet for lunch. Sanya eats her way through this episode. Every time we saw Sanya, she was at a lunch, weren't she? So, they meet for lunch, and we find out that they went to Disney together with their kids. So, it's like a, you know, a double family vacation. Candy put into the group for everybody that has kids going to Disney. Everybody's invited. Only Sanya reached out. Um, Their kids are close enough in age that they probably had a really, really good time. So Sanya's telling her that Ross now wants to live on his own. Doesn't necessarily have a problem with the family being around, but no problem with the family, I should say. But he kind of feels like, yo, like he wants to be the king of his castle. We just don't need all these extra people up in the house. I agree. I agree. I agree. There's no reason why y'all can't all be in separate places now. Sanya then said that her mom just got back from Florida and said Florida is calling her name. So now her mom wants to move to Florida. That troubles Sanya. It troubles her because she wants them as a family to to all live together. She wants her family to continue to live together. She said that they said, you know, one to two years. It hasn't been two years. So why does everybody want to move? Sonya, what is it, girl? Do you not want to have responsibilities? Because it seems like, because, you know, we know that Sanya doesn't cook. We know that she probably wants to be able to pick up and go and do whatever she wants to. And she's able to leave Deuce at the house because there's always somebody there to watch him. It's given Sanya doesn't want to grow up. That's what it's telling me. It's, it's codependency. So she feels that they have not tapped into their full potential as a family of working together and making money together. They can do that with you living here and them living three, four, five miles up the road. Y'all can still work together without living in the same house. Unless y'all are like a, a, a TikTok house. Are y'all, are y'all a, what is it on Bella? Are, are y'all a creator, a creator house? Where y'all are all in here working together as one thing. It just, it doesn't make sense. It does not make sense. And I don't blame Ross. Nobody wants to live with their mother-in-law and father-in-law, their sister-in-law, her husband, all these kids running around if we don't absolutely have to. We don't have to live like this. So why are we? So Candy tells her that Todd feels that he, or that she does not put enough into 
his dreams. So, you know, Todd feels that he goes out and gets fully behind Candy's ideas and projects. He wants the same in return from her. Candy says in a confessional that she's doing the best that she can. And she's trying to be sensitive to his feelings. Candy, something's got to give. But, you know, we don't want to hear about this. I <laughs> don't want to hear about this every single episode where you know what the issue is and you're not making any action, making any steps towards rectifying it. You know what I mean? Like, do you... Is, is it because you don't believe in Todd's projects? I think we need to really get to the root of why you don't want to do them. Why are you like pushing it to the side? Because I think if it was like a super crazy great idea, I think Candy would be more into it. So I'm wondering what the issue is that she's not fully getting behind this movie that Todd is writing. So they then talk about Courtney at the party. And... Sanya, oops, Sanya tells her that she met with Courtney and Sheree prior to that. And when she met with them, you know, Courtney insinuated Candy was ghetto. So we get the flashback. And in the flashback clip, we see Sheree, Courtney, and Sanya all talking from that first time they, from last episode. And they're talking about how there was like this like low key, really nice. I don't know if it was like a restaurant or a lounge. We'll say like a little little vibe spot. And it had a certain type of clientele that would come. When Candy posted about it on her Instagram story, Courtney is saying that the very next week it turned ghetto. Now Sheree and Sanya get to cackling, right? They're laughing. So Candy was like, so did you defend me? What did you say when she said that? Sanya lied and was like, I told her that you two need to talk. And Candy was like, no, what did you say about her saying that, you know, I was ghetto? Sanya's lying through her teeth. Sanya then is in her confessional and said that she didn't think that Courtney was necessarily calling Candy ghetto. Sanya, you did this last last season where you went back and forth, back and forth. And depending on who you were talking to, that's whose side you were on. It didn't work for you last year and it's not going to work for you this year. I, you have to pick a side. You have to pick a side. But you going back and forth, talking shit about people back and forth and then lying in their faces. Like, I feel like people forget that you're on TV. This is being filmed. It's being recorded. We are going to see not Well, they are going to see Candy's going to see that footage back at the reunion. What is your response going to be? What is your response going to be? Lord, I just saying it's just she's not housewifing good. <laughs> Why aren't you housewife? Why haven't you learned anything from last season? Oh man. So we get a, a small little blip of Sanya on FaceTime with Ross. He is back in Austin. You know, they have Ross Elite, which is like their car service that they have. She's saying that, you know, they're having trouble getting and working on baby number two because he is always there. She's all full in on the baby, but we can't work on the baby if you're not here. Valid. So then we get Candy and Todd and they are at Blaze. So they're they're talking about how I guess sales and everything, oops, how everything has slowed down. And they're saying that it's because of the pandemic. They said the area that Blaze was put in was popping before the pandemic. Now that the pandemic has come through, it's not popping as much anymore. Todd said, Great, we are going to tweak some of the menu items. So he has some um different appetizers and different things like that, that they're going to do to try to modify the menu and hope that that'll bring in more people or, you know, maybe even switch up the clientele. So Todd then talks about wanting to open up this Mexican restaurant, Ole G. He then said that he's going to open up Ace's Pizza, like he has all these different things he wants to open up. Candy said, why? Why do you want to keep opening up all these restaurants? Ty said, because of the money. Like, that's literally the only thing Ty's worried about. It's the money for him. So he said, opening up these restaurants, he makes more money doing that than he has anything else. He wants to use that money 
to fuel um, his projects that he wants to do for TV and movie and stuff like that. So basically, he wants to be his own his own backer, his own financer, his own producer. Okay. I mean, if that's how you want to do it, it's a plan, right? If these if these restaurants are doing well, go for it. So production, I'm sorry, Candy's cousin Melvin comes in. We know that Melvin is the one that um was shot at Blaze that was all over like the all over the blogs and the news and stuff like that. So he comes in, they're asking him how he's doing. And he sounded like he was in pain. I didn't watch Candy in the Gang. So I'm not sure if that's just how he sounds. But he sounded like he was in pain, but he kept saying he was okay. Production comes in. I said, not breaking the fourth wall. All right. They asked Candy, we not going to talk about the elephant in the room, talking about the shooting. And Todd was like, no, because it's a legal, it's a legal matter. We cannot talk about it. So... Candy and her confessional said that what happened is an employee came in late and intoxicated, got into it with Melvin. They went outside and then Melvin was shot. Um, I didn't like how production handled that. Pull Candy to the side, ask her about it, but don't come in and say, let's talk about the elephant in the room when the elephant is sitting right there. Her cousin is the product of this. You know what I mean? So like he is the elephant. His trauma is the is the elephant. What happened to him is the elephant. This is the elephant in the room. Like, don't like I just didn't like how they handled that. They could have easily said, Candy, come here for a minute and talk. Y'all could have still put it on camera. But I think to say that in front of him as if, yeah, let's exploit your pain. Let's exploit what happened to you. Like, that was very, very tacky, bravo. No, ma'am. That wasn't cool to do at all. So they get we didn't get a montage of all the different ladies. Um Montage of all the different ladies talking about everything. And then Sheree was like, you don't know if you're going to go for biscuits or bullets. <laughs> Shut up, Sheree. Shut dumb ass up. Like, I don't understand why would that be a joke when it was... It's, it's one thing if there was a, a situation outside of the restaurant, completely unrelated to Blaze, completely unrelated to Candy in any way, right? where it's not going to fall back on her, just a, a isolated random event. But when this is a, a situation that involved not only her staff, but her, her family, her cousin, like, I just, Sheree, worry about your own business. What are we going to get when we order She by Sheree? Because it looked like wrinkled ass hoodies. But go ahead, girl. I just feel like don't make light of somebody's situation like that. But then when the reunion comes, Sheree going to be the main one. I I, 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 I I don't remember saying that. You're going to be the main one doing that. <sighs> oh, Sheree. We then get a scene with Kenya in Brooklyn. So they're going to go play tennis with some friends. I forgot the lady's name. But she is the wife of Tevin Coleman, who... Does he play for Atlanta? I think he plays for the Falcons, but he's a running back. I had him on my fantasy I had him on my fantasy football team, so that's why I remember his name. But she is the wife of, she is his wife. They have daughters that are around the same age. That's, um, Kenya said that's Brooklyn's best friend. So Kenya is kind of showing the girls how to play tennis. It's a cute little scene. Then we sit down to talk about the mess, right? So I'm wondering if this lady is going to be, I always feel like when another woman is introduced on the show especially when it is a woman um whose husband is who is a true housewife let's put it like that who is a housewife um I always wonder if this is like a little low-key audition for the show for her or if this is really Kenya's friend you know what I mean so nonetheless they're talking about um she talks about her boo how she's excited to be dating he you know, checks off everything that she wanted in him. If not, you know, there's somebody else. Her friend is like, and if he's not, you know, I can introduce you to tons of guys. I can take you to some football games. So we, we can find you somebody. So the king starts talking about Martell and what happened at the party. So she said that Sheree just had a man that just got out of jail that made her look like a fool. 
Um, and then we get the scene of when Tyrone left her in Philadelphia, sitting outside. That mess of a uh, uh actually to, to point that out, that is the same scene where Kenya was the first person that she called, and Kenya offered to book her a flight and do everything she could to be there for her. But Sheree forgot about that, I guess. So Kenya then said that Sheree is digmatized, and the friend would say, Not at our big age, because you're too grown to be digmatized. You're too grown to be solely focused on that and ignoring everything else, all the red flags that Martell is chucking at her. Martell is just chucking red flags at her that we have seen that they've been bouncing off our TV screens from watching Love and Marriage Huntsville. But it's okay with Sheree because, you know, she's a different woman. So, meanwhile, Sheree is at dinner with Sanya, eating her way through this episode. So, Sheree is talking about being a glamour. Uh, Cairo had a little baby girl. So, we see the picture. She's adorable. She's an adorable little baby. So, Sanya tells her, oh, I just had lunch with Candy. Um, and we kind of talked about the situation with Martell a little bit. So, Sheree... And, and Sanya both feel that Kenya is putting this aggressive label onto black men. And they feel that it's it's a trend, it's a problem with Sheree. I'm sorry, it's a problem with Kenya. Sheree said that Martel may not have been 100% right, but she said that Kenya needs to take some accountability. I don't know what Kenya is taking accountability for. And we'll talk about that later, but I have no idea what accountability Kenya is is taking. I don't. Martel, she said that Martel said that if he was trying to fuck her two years ago, who even cares? So let's let's get this straight. Let's get this straight. Let's get this straight. So Sheree, Martel told you that even if he was trying to fuck her two years ago, who cares? So that doesn't tell you that Martel might have deleted some of those messages. That doesn't give you the slightest bit of, hmm, you didn't get that? Okay, Sheree. It's like Sheree is committed to being stupid. She's committed to looking foolish. Committed to it. Committed to it. So, she feels that the stuff with Kenya and Martell just doesn't sit well with her at all. But apparently, Martell's behavior on Love and Marriage Huntsville and the way that Martell has treated his ex-wife, that does sit well with her. Always on the wrong side of history, Sheree. Always. We get Drew down in the studio. She's there with Ralph. Um, Drew, get a real manager, get a real producer. That's not your husband. Um, then they talk about Drew being on Tiny Desk. I said, as if. <laughs> as if. Could it happen one day, I guess? Sure, but Tiny Desk goes to the popping of the poppiness. Like, uh, next scene. So we get to the final scene of the episode, which is Sheree showing, um, yeah, Sheree being at her distribution warehouse. Um, Her little team of two are packing orders. They say she has 279 orders in the queue, and they're trying to get these out for her. Sheree is looking at the hoodies, they're wrinkled. They tell her, I would personally steam these. Sheree said, is that an extra charge? They were like, yes. Sheree was like, ooh, I'm on a budget. So that means no. Y'all will be getting wrinkled hoodies. So Kenya shows up. And Kenya starts, they, Sheree is holding up some socks. And Kenya's like, that looks like a, a Dallas Cowboy star. And it's because we know Kenya was just in that commercial with some of the other housewives that like, really cute commercial that they did with Dak Prescott. So Sheree, uh, Kenya then talks about her relationship with the new guy she's dating, who was like the CEO, founder, everything of Kill Me Now. She just said that her relationship is exciting. She's having fun with it. That's, that's what you want when you're dating. She then asked Sheree, if she has a lot of things in common with Martell. Sheree said, okay, let's talk about what happened the other day. Sheree feels it did not have to go the way that it did. Kenya said, well, I didn't deserve to get cussed out either. I don't know if he cussed you out. He cussed at you, but he didn't cuss you out, Kenya. Small, small correction. He didn't cuss you out. So... 
Kenya said that he did DM her and she didn't accept it because of how he behaves with his wife. She said that the only thing that she knows about him is what she has seen from watching the show. I feel like anybody that has watched Love and Marriage Huntsville, just watching those clips, watching those episodes, watching those scenes, that alone should make you not want to be or be associated or be around or want to do anything with Martel. That's what I would get from it. But hey, Sheree is a different, a, a different type of lady, okay? So... Sheree said that Martel was excited to meet everybody and he felt ambushed because he really thought that, you know, they would all get along. Sheree thinks that Martel and Kenya would get along. Kenya says she don't know him and she don't want to know him. So Sheree is in her confessional and she said, I knew about the DM. Yeah, I knew about it. I knew about the DM because Martel tells me we talk about everything. Martel told me everything about it. I knew he DM'd her. That's why I was like, you know, kind of low key and coy with it because because I knew about it. Sheree, you ain't know about that damn DM. Girl, shut up. Shut out that lying up. What Rock say? A lie don't care who tell it. Shut that shit up. You know damn well you didn't know. <laughs> you know damn well you didn't know. So Kenya said it wasn't offensive that he told her what he told her um, about the it was two it was two fucking years ago. That's just how he talks. So she's not offended by that. Kenya is offended that he said that she accepts and reads every single DM. Kenya feels that that is insinuating that she is a hoe and she just sleeps with anybody, whatever the case. Sheree sits up there and lies as usual and says that, oh, I don't remember him saying that. Sheree, yes, yeah, she did because you you did the oh, 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 oh type deal. You know he said it. I just don't understand why Sheree lies so much, y'all. Why does Sheree lie? Why does Sheree lie, y'all? <laughs> why? Her name should be Shalaya. Why does she lie? Oh, my God. So... Kenya said what was offensive, what was so offensive to him that she had, that he had to curse at her and get overly defensive. Sheree keeps saying, well, y'all would get along. Y'all would get along. Sheree is completely avoiding every single thing that Kenya is saying. Kenya is telling Sheree about all these red flags and Sheree is avoiding all, but y'all would get along now. Who cares if he cussed at you? Y'all would get along. Who cares if he cheated on his ex-wife? Y'all would get along. Who cares about this? Y'all would get along. Like, Sheree, what, what is going on? <laughs> what? So... Crazy, crazy, crazy. So, Kenya then said, it's bros before hoes. We're the bros and Martel is the hoe. I said, Lord, I love a double entendre if I ever. I love a double entendre. So, Sheree said that she needs to start being careful with her words because tell, saying that he is, you know, aggressive. Because Kenya then says that he's abusive. Um, and by abusive, we know that she means verbally abusive. So Sheree said, we need to be careful with your words. Kenya said she was not disrespectful towards him. Okay. Kenya then feels that him saying that she answers everybody to see where she's a hoe. Sheree doesn't remember that, but she said that it would not trigger her. She would just say something coy like they wish. Oh my God. It's like. I feel like we, we have to get past telling people what they can and cannot be offended by. If Kenya is offended by that, Kenya is offended by that. I hate when people try to tell somebody, well, I wouldn't be offended by that, so you shouldn't be offended by that either. Th that's not how life works. It's just not how life works. So Sheree says in her confessional that Kenya views black men as public enemy number one, probably because she doesn't have one. I said, ah, yikes. Yikes. Um, Kenya said that once again, everybody was surrounded by their spouses. She is there by herself trying to defend herself against a man that is, you know, coming at her. They're going to agree to disagree, but I feel like that is the beginning of the breakdown 
of uh, Kenya Moore and Sheree Whitfield on this season of Housewives of Atlanta. <laughs> so if you made it this far in the video, um, thank you. I appreciate all the support. If you have not already subscribed to the channel, thumbs up the video. If you enjoyed anything in this particular piece of content, hop in the comment section and remember that a reply is not a argument. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.